maybe there's a way to unify all the weirdo Linux boards out there that are hard to use. Yeah. But um, that dream didn't happen for a while, but it turns out a Lady Ada needed to come along. So this is called libgpiod, and I wanted to, to like pseudo interview you about this because I know what this is, um, and I know what we used to have to do with Linux, and I know and I know this is kind of one of those weird things that Adafruit does that like. No, no one's going to talk about anywhere, but then later on, this is going to be the standard. Yeah. Kind of like Feather. Yeah. Ain't nobody was talking about Feather, now Feather is well, kind of the de facto standard. Well, they didn't even know that they needed a Feather. Well, I sent some... They wanted know, a horseless carriage, and I'm just like, you want a Feather. Yeah, I think it's a little bit like that. It's like, oh, here, here's a here's a spec, here's the thing. So, um, when people wanted to do some type of... Is this the interview we started? Yeah. Okay, So, great. when people wanted to do something with a Raspberry Pi, or like a friendly arm... Nano Pi or Banana Pi or Free Libre Linux board, um, how how would they get sensor information and in? how would they get like digital signals in? Well, good luck because every ARM board had a slightly different way of doing it. The yeah, Raspberry Pi, none of it was the same. I know that was a little different. Um, each one had its own different kind of bindings for how to do GPIO. Um, often they they did have the same I squared C, but usually you do need to have GPIO along with I squared C or SPI. Um, to control like uh, different pins or, or agreed interrupts and every single chip was different. Every chip had their own little helper, a little binding program like Raspberry Pi has RPI GPIO and then for BeagleBone we actually wrote one, it's called like Adafruit BBIO um, but it was different for every single board and so there was no way, if you go to driver you'd have to kind of go through and, and, and port it each time it won't be a ton of work, but like every board, you'd have to do all this extra and effort to and for you, every single driver. And you had to do things like, well, I'm going to write to a file called pin 16. Yeah, that's there's this, a file. Like the yeah. only cross-platform way to do it was called Sisyphus, yeah. which is um, like the like ancient uh, uh, myth. You would you would be like pushing this thing up a hill, and then you get run over by it. Like yeah. it was, it's not dissimilar. Um, but it would actually have a file system. It would have a a, a fake file system item for every GPIO and you could write and read to it, but it was, you you could only like set it high or low. It was like really slow because it went through the file system. So like you could only do maybe like a kilohertz or two um, speeds, which is, it, it's just not bad. I mean, like it's better than not being able to do it, but it was still much too slow to bit bang GPIO stuff. Like if you want to bit bang SPI okay. or, or talk All right, to so sensor. let's say if you want to do something faster, what, what terrible thing would you have to do? <laughs> well, the other option, which is what a lot of these um, binding programs would do, and um, I, I, I always, whenever I, when I first heard about this, I thought it was just so bizarre. You'd actually open up dev mem. You'd open up the memory, and then you'd seek to the register address for the GPIO peripheral. So for example, in a lot of ARM chips, it's like uh, 4000, like 2800 or something. It's in the 40, uh, 4000 uh, high byte range. And then you'd actually read and write from the register, sort of like um, like my metaphors. Like a lot of people who've done our, uh, AVR chips, like earlier PIC or AVR chips, you would actually do like port B, you know, pipe equals zero uh, X zero one, and that would toggle a bit high. And you'd like you know ampersand yeah. toggle to to set it low. You'd actually write to like port B, like all caps, or DDRD or whatever. You'd actually write to that register. So ironically, in like the Cortex chips, like you don't really do that because there's like so much stuff going on that you can't write. You can, but it's like a real pain. Usually, you have to use SimSys. But then. What's funny is that you zip away all the way around to like ARM7, and then you're back to doing that. You just you just basically seek to that register location, and you just write the byte, which um, is incredibly fast, right? Because you're, you're talking directly to the chip. But it's a terrible, terrible idea, and every chip is a little bit different. Everyone yeah. has, you know, and then even the Raspberry Pi, the different chips when they went to the Pi 1, Pi 2, Pi 3, that register address moved around. And um, another thing that's kind of ironic is once in a while, you get a, a, a Raspberry Pi that doesn't know what board it is because it, it got misprogrammed or something. This happened a long time ago, and it would write to the wrong location because you're. Yeah. It thinks it's something else. So it's it's kind of um, like hilarious and um, extremely fast and just a terrible, terrible idea. And again, you have to go through each board and, and okay. customize it. So you spent a bunch of time on this, and Brendan helped out, and now there's something better. That should well, I be didn't. I didn't write libgpid. No, no, no. You didn't. But you have something that works with, and this should work with Linux kernel 4.8 and above going forward. Yeah. So, and so they, you have something because it was announced in February. They're like, hey, there's this there's new thing, thing. New thing. Mainline. And it's in mainline. Mainline. It's called libgpid. Libgpio. But, but and nothing then, yeah. has been released for it. What's well, like GPIO? There's a GPIO kernel interface now. So it's kind of in the middle, right? It's not as incredibly fast and dangerous as the dev mem prodding. And it's not as slow and clunky as Sisyphus. You use, you're using like octals, so they're you know fairly fast. 
Um, and then there's bindings. There's, there's libgpa I do is actually the binding on top of this, this kernel interface. And um, there's C++ and C and um, Python bindings. And I think there's also bindings for Go, Lang, and uh, some other languages as well that send these ioctals and let you, um, through the kernel, you know, you, it's, they're just called like GPIO chips and then you have the, the, the pin and, you, and the kernel registers what pins are available and then you can read and write to them and they're a lot safer. You know, you, you hold the line to no other, that's another thing, I'm like a dev mem, you get multiple processes like writing to memory and like they don't know, like they're doing their own thing. And um, with this, you can hold the line and own it. And so other processes can't take control of it, which is nice. It kind of has a, a semaphore thing going on. And it's also fairly fast. I mean, it's not a blazingly fast. Again, it's not as fast as writing directly to memory, directly to registers. But it's, I got like 10 kilohertz, I think, or maybe 30 kilohertz. Um, no, sorry, 40 kilohertz from C. And from Python, I got 10 kilohertz toggle, which is, which is not bad, right? I mean, considering you're going through the kernel, it's, it's, you know, it's totally safe and protected. Um, that's good enough for a lot of stuff. Yeah. So, so for the folks yeah. who know about this, it's like, oh, this is this is going to be really interesting and possibly change the landscape for Linux boards because now you're able to write something once and you don't have to do something different for every single one. So a little shout out to Grogard, who's in the Discord, who does um, some interesting Linux stuff. But um, good work. I, I think this is going to be one of those things, much like the Feather. I was I was there when you're like, here's what Feather's going to be. I, this reminds me of that because I think well, it'll Well, I help. really want to be done with it. You know, it's like yeah. a, we wrote, you know, 120 circuit Python libraries. For every sensor, from the HCSR04, you know, two dollar ultrasonic, all the way to the VME680, to you know the VS1053, like every chip we've we've written a driver for I squared C or SPRUR or GPIO, like character LCD. We just did a huge rewrite of all the character LCD libraries. The goal here is I do not want to keep writing like here's the version for Orange Pie and here's the version yeah. for here's BeagleBone, Beagle here's Raspberry Pi, here's, Pie. Pie. here's the because there's like a new Linux board like every eight minutes. Like it's yeah. impossible, and each one has like slightly different configuration settings, and there's only going to be more embedded Linux. And I think Python embedded Linux is the future. So having all these drivers, I think will um, kind of do well, it can, by using Circuit Python as the base API and libgpiod as that as that pure kernel interface. Yeah. We are separating um, the hardware from w w all the weirdness that is in the device tree. Like, I don't want to touch that. I don't want to know about it. You know, I just want to say pin five is pin five and, and kernel, you take care of the rest. Yeah, I don't want to take care of that. So anyways, good work. And uh, this is an, I think this was a very nice thing that you did because a lot of people do a lot of specific work for only their dev board, only their chipset. Yeah. And I get it because they want to sell those. But we decided let's do something for everybody, and you know maybe rising tide boat thing will happen. I think it's good. And I think uh, you know hopefully, you know I'm going to do maybe the first board this weekend to add a new board. And then I'm going to do you know like Scott has has done a really good job this week writing a porting guide. Here's how you would add your own yeah. board. Because I'm I'm not going to be. There's so many. I actually don't even like we learned about a new one this weekend like the Libre board. I'm like I don't even heard about this. Yeah. Thing. So maybe people who get these boards will be built at circuit Python support. It's not that hard, it's only a couple of files that they just have to define, define all the pins. And then with libgpod, they don't have to do any special work beyond just defining the pins. I squared C is standard on, on kernels, SPI is standard on kernels, and UART is standard in, in kernels. So that kind of, be, you know, all together, I mean, we still have analog digital inputs in PWMs, which are not standardized. libgpod doesn't talk about that, it only does digital inputs and outputs. So that's, those, those two are the ADCs and PWMs are still kind of messy, but we can get like the big four, right? G clean GPIO, I squared C, SPI, um, and UART. And that covers like 95% of, of so, use cases. Thanks for listening about this because like this will be important, we think, one day. Um, and it's interesting, there's not a lot of libgpio decode out there. You know, I looked out and it was like, I mean, I, I was able to find the documentation is good enough that I was easily able to write the code, but it's actually, and there's some examples, yeah. but it's actually very, uh, it's not used yet, and it's a shame. People should use it. I think, I think because everyone's got this crutch, they've got these uh, existing, you know, orange pie dot GPIO bindings. They're like, well, you know, why should I do anything else? It's like, well, no, you really, it's like, pull the bandaid yeah. off, get, get off of this, because you, otherwise you will not be able to maintain and it. And for those who are just like, Getting started maybe with programming and maybe they're using Circuit Python. Good news: the Circuit Python you're learning now means you'll be able to program Linux boards. Like that, that that is yeah. that is a reality that's going to happen. So um, one little bit. Uh, this is real time feedback for you. Um, Gogart says it was a no brainer setup. Didn't have to set up all the pins. It just found them from the DTS. Libgpod. Yeah, I mean it's it's it is a high class. Well, that that's not my part. That's the guy. That's the part that the kernel did. I think. 
probably. Yeah, but either way, it was easy to set up. It was LibGPT is easy to set up, and I think adding Circuit Python support is going to be very easy. You don't too. hear anyone say something's easy with Linux. No, I'm just celebrating that. That's a, that's impossible. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, anyways, so, moving along. So we think that's big news. Um, the other big.